Hello, and welcome to another of Morse's Math Morsels. Here we have x squared plus x plus 41, which is Euler's famous prime producing profound polynomial for a consecutive whole number x's from 0 to 39 inclusive. Yes, if you put in any whole number between 0 and 39 for x, and evaluate, you will get a prime number. And that showed uh, what extraordinary insights Euler, the Swiss mathematician, had centuries ago. And I uh, listed just a few of his insights, which he uh, evidently well knew about, probably before he even went to nursery school. Such was the genius of Euler. One such insight was parity. Note that x times the quantity x plus 1. If x is an even number, then x plus 1, being 1 more than x, must be odd. And even times odd is even. That's what parity means, the property of a number being odd or even. Or in the other case, if x is an odd number, then 1 more plus x is even, and odd times even is again even. So Euler well knew that x squared plus x would always be even, and adding 41 to that would again make the sum odd. And all prime numbers, except 2, are odd. Another insight he had was unit digit. If you were to put in the number, say, 1 through 10 for x, and evaluate that x squared plus x, every unit digit is only a, a 0, or a 2, or a 6. Well, we can try it out. 1 squared plus 1 ends with 2. 2 squared plus 2 ends with 6. And if we go down the line, a 3 through 9 will have ending digits of that 0, 2, or 6 only. So why should that matter, units digit? Well, we're adding on 41 is generating all these consecutive primes. If any of these digits ended in 4, then this would not be such a prime-producing polynomial, because a 1's digit of 4 added to the 1's digit of 41 would be 5, and there are no prime numbers ending with 5 except 5 itself. But all multiples of 5, including all the odd ones, 15, 25, 35, etc., are all composite. They are not prime. And another insight was that this x squared plus x is never one more than a multiple of 3. It is always 2 more than a multiple of 3 or a multiple of 3 only. So that was a more remarkable insight that Euler knew about. Indeed, if we let uh, x or x plus 1 be a multiple of 3, then the product is a multiple of 3 itself. 41 is not a multiple of 3, so the total sum would not be a multiple of 3 if you're adding on a multiple of 3 for x squared plus x. But what if x squared plus x is not a multiple of 3? Well, it represents uh, the two consecutive integers, neither of which are multiples of 3. One of them could only be uh, 3x plus 1. And the other non-multiple 3 is 3x plus 2. And if it were to do the multiplication, it would come out to 9x squared plus uh, 9x plus 2. And notice that this is 2 more than multiple 3. The coefficients of the x squared and the x terms are both 9, so 9x squared is a multiple of 3, so is 9x. So we're just adding 2 on to a multiple of 3. And as 40, 41, it is 2 more than multiple of 3. 41 equals 39 plus 2. So in every case, with this x squared plus x plus 41, that final sum will always be a total of 4 more, or 1 more, than a multiple of 3. This is 2 more than multiple of 3, 41 is 2 more, the result is 4 more. 
So that was a way that made it possible for x squared plus x plus 41 to generate all those consecutive primes, all a series of odd numbers, all of which end in the digits 1, 3, or 7 when you add the 1 of the 41. We got the, uh, let us rub this out, write down the 1, 3, 7. And you add the units digit of 41. And finally, there being one more to multiple of 3, because if it were, then you'd have uh, the 2 more to multiple of 3, and adding that to 1 more to multiple of 3 would result in the entire sum x squared plus x plus 41 being a multiple of 3. And only 3 among its multiples is prime. So, thank you, Euler and his insights into his remarkable prime-producing polynomial. Thanks for viewing.